Hello and welcome back to another Space Engineers Showcase video. In today's video, we're looking at another small vehicle, and this one is from a creator on Xbox, which I believe is the first one I've ever showcased on this channel. Yes, we are looking at the NTC AS Otis, which is this lovely thing over here. So this is a small block personal transport vehicle for you to fly around on a planet and perhaps go and visit a train station, collect a few bits and bobs, and then go and fly back to your base. Pressing F10 and finding it in the spawn menu, there it is. This thing is 139 small blocks, using no DLC pack items, no mods, and no scripts. We can also see all the information about it on the Steam Workshop page, or even on the mod.io, depending on where you're getting this from. Got all the useful information, like the controls over here, and of course where it came from, which is from Xbox One. So giving this thing a thumbs up, which I already have, moving all the way around to the very front. We'll have a quick look around the outside, then you can see how terrible I am at controlling this with a controller. But anyway, front and center, we've got ourselves a spotlight to light up the darkness to make sure we're not going to bump into anything in the night. On the left and right hand side of that, we've got some atmospheric thrusters to help slow us down, and atmospheric thrusters are the only form of thrust that appear on this ship, so we are only good for places with an atmosphere. Surrounding all of that, we've got some lovely standard steel grey blocks that go around the main body of the ship. And just above that, we've got some windows to make sure no bugs splatter onto your helmet or driving this thing around at great speeds. If we were to move it all the way around the side, that is what we get and how we get in and out. So it's a rather open cockpit design. We've got a small little shelter right above us, just in case it starts raining. If we were to come all the way inside and look towards the front, we've got a programmable block with our standard artificial horizon and of course our meters per second right below it. Turning around and facing my character, on the bottom right hand side we've got a cargo container with an easy access on the side, and on the opposite side we've got ourselves a reactor just to jump start this thing with power. If we were to continue around towards the very back there's some more atmospheric thrusters, a lovely green light on this side, then moving towards the very back we've got a blinking white light and some more atmospheric thrusters. Putting on my light you can see on the opposite side a red interior light, so now we can see which side we're going when flying over to a station. Then if we were to come all the way up and above there, looking down we've got ourselves a large battery to power this thing, just in case you're not at the stage where you can get uranium and use reactors. Continuing along towards the front there, we can see our little shelter, which is just above our character. There's a glass window at the front there. And now it's time to drop all the way down and look underneath. So just ignoring all the grass, that is what we get. A magnetic plate underneath to clamp ourselves down on. There are some more abstract thrusters. And over towards over to here, we've got ourselves an LCD screen. We've got the name of the company that created this ship. So there we go with that. Then at the very back, there we go. So that all done and out of the way. It does look fantastic. It's very small, very sleek, and looks very easy to build, apart from that reactor, which you don't really need. So just grabbing hold of my character and bringing up the HUD, we're going to use this on the PC controls because on the Xbox controls, I'm not too sure how to change it over to another tab. Yes, number one is going to be for our atmospheric thrusters to turn them on and off, and these are the ones at the very front for a cruise control. So undoing the magnetic plate and taking off, this is what we get. Pressing number one, we now turn off our air brakes, so when we start moving forwards, we're not going to slow down. Turning that on, we come to a stop. Number two is for our battery to auto or recharge. Number three is for our reactor on and off. Number four is for our magnetic place underneath to lock and unlock it. Number six is for our atmospheric thrusters all the way around the ship, on and off, so if we turn that off, we're going to come crashing down to the ground. And number seven is for our interior lights all the way around the ship, to simply turn them on and off. So there we go. On tab number two, we then got nothing else, so it's time to fly this thing around with a controller. So yes, just moving around here, this is what we get. I think I've just zoomed in the camera a little bit, let's just try and zoom out there, there we go. Yes, we are a rather speedy little vehicle, forwards and backwards. Try and rotate ourselves a little bit like so, there we go. Moving left and right is what you would expect from having one thruster left and right, so we are a little bit slow with that. And of course moving up and down, that is what we get. So yes, moving forwards and backwards is the fastest thing on this ship. And of course for controls, that is what we get. It might be a little odd because my controller controls are usually a bit more meatier than normal. But it seems to have a reasonable amount of control, there's a fair amount of meat on here, so it's not too floaty, and it's basically what I prefer. So yes, we can now just rotate this all the way around. It is rather odd that you have to press a separate button in order to roll this thing, but I suppose it does make sense. For me, personally, it'll be more about X and B using that to roll the vehicle. That means you won't have to 
basically move over to another tab because if you press L1 you can't actually start to move the vehicle anymore because you are now limited to tilting it up, down and left and right. So if they just move that across maybe to the Y, B, A and X, it might be a bit more usable. But then again, I don't really do this too often. So one final thing to do while flying this thing around is of course slam this into a mountainside. There is a perfect candidate in the distance so we now can do charge all the way along. Let's just go and move this over to the first person view. There we go. And we're going to charge along and go over to say this section right here. So it's a lovely little speeder and there'll be a link to it in the description below if you do wish to download and play around for yourself. I highly recommend you do. And that was a rather fantastic crash. Let's go and put our jetpack on and fly away. There we go. We just lost the front of it. And as I was saying, there'll be a link to it in the description below. And I'll be back with another video some point soon. Bye bye.